Welcome to Mathematics. Today we'll be solving the Pearson and Excel IEL paper of uh, Physics Unit 3 from January 2024. In question 1, we have a stack of 500 sheets of paper. We have the dimensions of it, so x, y and z. In part A, we are given the mass of this which is 2.070 kg in the first question we have to uh, state the resolution of the balance in this case the resolution of the balance will be uh, the least uh, value it can measure so 0 0.001 kg this is the smallest uh, value this is measuring if the reading was given in this form, so 2.07 kg, in this case the uh, resolution of the balance would be 0 0.01 kg. If it was 2.1 kg, the resolution of the balance would be 0 0.1 kg. So the smallest number it can measure is the resolution. In part uh, A2 we have to find the percentage uncertainty the percentage uncertainty would be the measurement uncertainty I write divided by the measured value multiplied by 100 in this case the measured value would be half the uh, resolution so 0 0.001 by 2 divided by the measured value which is 2.070 times 100 percent will get 0 0.024 percentage in part b we are told that the student used vernier calipers to measure the thickness y of the stack of paper uh, we have to explain one technique he should use to determine an accurate value uh, in case of using vernier calipers or uh, micrometer screw gods a common answer would be to check for the zero error and uh, uh, to eliminate the systematic error of the instruments so another general answer would be to uh, take readings at different uh, parts so take a reading over here then take a reading of thickness from here then do it here so repeat at different places and take a mean that's a general answer However, for uh, vernier calipers and micrometer screw gauge, a uh, specific answer would be to check for the zero error to reduce the systematic error. So one of the answer would be check Another answer could be so If we do this step, so if we repeat measurements at different places and calculate the mean, uh, we'll reduce the random error. Uh, in this case, we can also uh, speak about, uh, in this particular situation, we could also talk about uh, 
not tightening the jaws of the vernier caliper too strongly because that would compress the paper causing a random error to be introduced. Uh, this uh, uh, is one of the more rare answers. These two answers will uh, have to generally, they will always come up somewhere. This one and this one. They will almost always come up in your paper. This is a slightly more uh, question specific answer. So. So any of the three answers would be fine in this case. Now in part C we have a calculation. We are given the values of x, y and z and we have to find the density. So the density is mass by volume. We have the mass which is 2.070 kg. Uh, we want the density in gram per cm cube, so we'll convert the kg into grams, so multiply in 10 cube. And we have to find the volume in uh, centimeter cube, so let me convert this into centimeters. 210 millimeter would be 21 centimeter. This would be 4.27. This would be 29.7. So multiply 21.0 times 4.27 times 29.7. I will have a density of 0 0.7726. So 0 0.777 gram per cm cube. All of our values are to three significant figures over here. And this value is up to four significant figure. So our appropriate significant figure would be 3SF. Uh, you can write a note down. So the given data values, so in this case the data values or the given values are x, y and z. Also the mass which was 2.070 kg. Uh, this value we got in 1, 2, 3, 4. So this value we got in 4 significant figures. And these values we got in 3 significant figures. So our answer to this question uh, should be in 3 significant figures because three significance uh, is the lowest amount of significant figures used in the data. Now in uh, part B2, we have to explain why making measurements of the whole stack of paper is better than making measurements of a single sheet of paper. If I measure a single sheet of paper, the mass will be very low and the thickness will be very low. So the mass and thickness uh, or y in this case would be very low. If the measured, va the measured value would be low, however, uh, the measurement uncertainty would still be the same. So the percentage uncertainty, which is measured measurement uncertainty by measured value into 100%. The measurement uncertainty 
is still the same however if we measure only one sheet of paper the measured value will decrease so the percentage uncertainty will increase if percentage uncertainty increases uh, our, the results of our experiment become less credible so we'll write for a single sheet of paper the So percentage uncertainty will be high. Now moving on to question 2, we are given this apparatus. Then we are given some uh, details about the apparatus. So we are told that the motor was connected in a circuit including a battery and a switch. So it includes a battery and a switch. The student also connected additional components to determine the power of the motor. We have to use uh, complete the circuit diagram for. In this case, uh, what we already have is a switch, a motor, a battery. So that's uh, what we have in the circuit. The students al uh, also wants to determine the power of the motor. So we'll need a ammeter and a voltmeter. Power equals to voltage into current. So we'll need the voltage and the current. So we have a battery over here. an ammeter over here <coughs> the motor over here this is the symbol for a motor you have to remember it's just a circle with M written on it we'll also have to uh, include the switch and the voltmeter so this would be the circle uh, circuit diagram here We could also include a resistor over here, uh, but it's not uh, mandatory. Oh, we are given the motor over here, so. In part B, uh, we are told that the student closed the switch in the circuit and the motor lifted the mass from the floor and she used a, a meter rule to measure the height gain by the 1 kg mass in 10 seconds. Now we are uh, in part B1, we have to describe how sh uh, she should measure a single value of the height gain as accurately as possible. We are told to include the use of any additional apparatus as well. So the, the, the motor is uh, rotating the axle and the axle is pulling the mass up. We have to measure uh, how much this 1 kg mass uh, moves up in 10 seconds. So we'll clamp a meter rule over here. So this is a meter rule. We'll clamp it over here. 
uh, for precautions we will uh, use a set square to ensure that the uh, meter rule is uh, vertically aligned we will also have to place the meter rule close so that uh, the parallax error is reduced and we have to take uh, readings from eye level by being par perpendicular to the scale so that those are the points we'll write down so. so we'll clamp a meter rule in place close to the mass ensuring that it is kept for it is kept vertically aligned The readings should then be taken from eye level. Uh, perpendicular to the meter rule uh, this means that this basically means that uh, we are taking a reading from eye level if we take a measurement from eye level so our eyes are over here this is our line of sight so we are seeing this thing over here across this meter rule we are seeing this uh, mass over here across this meter rule if I draw a straight line from the mm, eye to the mass and extend it we'll get this line on the ruler which will be a 90 degree with the meter rule so this is what we mean by perpendicular uh, we'll take measurements perpendicular to the meter rule now on to part uh, two we have to explain why repeat measurements are appropriate for this measurement Uh, we take repeat uh, readings because we uh, want to reduce uh, random error due to anomalies so if we take uh, repeat readings we'll calculate a mean which will give a more accurate value and reduce the random error so we'll write something along the lines Uh, you can mention what type of random errors can occur here random errors it could be due to reaction time because we are usually using our like it's we are measuring the distance moved by a, a moving object at a with us with in 10 seconds uh, we might take more uh, more than 10 seconds to react so we might measure the distance at uh, around 10.2 seconds or 10.1 seconds so that would cause a random error random errors might be introduced from parallax error as well for this case
so this is how we had answered this question now moving on to part c we have to explain how the measurements made by the student should be used to determine the efficiency of the motor as it leaves the mass so here in this case we are finding uh, the power so we are finding the power of the motor here and in this case we are finding the distance the mass uh, the height gained so the height gain causes a change in the gpe and this is the work done by the motor so this is the work done by motor and this is the useful energy output and the work done by the motor is the total energy input so power input in this case would be v into i and useful power output is mg del h is the change in gp per unit time so mg del h by t so the efficiency in this case would be mg del h by t divided by vi we'll get mg del h by vi t this is the efficiency we just have to and uh, just doing this uh, calculation here is enough instead of uh, taking uh, in this in power we could also do it in energy so energy input is ivt or power into time so this is ivt or vit useful energy output would be mg del h so efficiency mg del h by vit so the same expression so we could use both approaches now moving on to the next question we are given this with a this apparatus with a laser pointed at a single hair and the screen behind to find the diameter of the hair we have to identify a health and safety issue caused by using a laser and how this issue may be dealt with so in case of using lasers uh, we have to talk about how it might uh, damage our eyes so lasers uh we could talk about uh, using a dark lens uh safety goggles we could also talk about not looking into the laser beam directly so the latter one would be more uh, relevant
the student should not look at the laser beam directly now on to part b we have this uh, diffraction grating we are told that the student used the meter rule to measure the distance between the adjacent minima we have to describe a method of how the student should determine an accurate value for the distance between the adjacent minima how we could use two, two approaches here uh, i can measure uh, this minima and then measure this minima and this minima and take a mean or I could take a big reading like this so uh, take readings between one two three. so three gaps uh, at once and divide the value I get by three so if this was L we'd get L by three as the distance between adjacent minima and we also have to take the readings from the center of the minima so not at the edges like not from here not from here the reading should be taken from the exact center so we have to measure if i talk about the latter method of uh, measuring three gaps together we'll write measure the distance in the centers we could either write multiple or mention the numbers so and we'll divide the distance by the number of minima or by the number of gaps between the minima instead of the number of gaps we can write 3 as well or number of gaps between minima now we have to explain how the student could mo modify this arrangement of the apparatus to reduce the percentage uncertainty in this value uh, we could increase the uh, distance of the hair from the screen so if we increase this distance uh, the distance between the adjacent minima so if this was the distance between two adjacent minima uh, if we move the screen further apart this would move apart so this distance will increase uh, as measured value increases or percentage uncertainty would decrease so that's one approach we can take Now on to part C1, we have to find the mean value of D, so the mean would be
76.0 plus 84.4 plus 77.1 by 3 so we'll get 79.2 micrometer uh, since all of these values are given in uh, 3SF or 1 decimal place, we'll also give this value in 1 decimal place or 3SF. Now we have to find the percentage uncertainty in the mean value of D. So for percentage uncertainty, uh, if we have multiple readings, we'll have the max value minus the minimum value by 2 divided by the uh, mean value if we apply this uh, in this scenario we'll get the maximum value is 84.4 and the minimum is uh, 76.0 and divided by the mean which is 79.2 multiplied by 100 which gives us a percentage uncertainty of 5.3 percent now on to part d we are given that in a different experiment the student applied force to stretch the hair Determine the breaking uh, average breaking stress was 181 megapascal with a percentage uncertainty of 6%. Now the student suggested that the breaking stress for hair is the same as the breaking stress for copper wear. We have to deduce whether uh, the suggestion is correct. Uh, we can find uh, we can do this in two approach. Uh, we'll have questions like this in every paper each one of them we can solve it uh, in one of two approaches so approach one as uh, the percentage difference method approach two would be the range method in the percentage difference method uh, we'll find the difference of the uh, difference of the percentage difference of this value. So th the values we are comparing basically, the values we are comparing are the breaking stress for copper wear, which is 210 megapascal, and the breaking stress of the hair, which is 181 megapascal. Uh, so percentage difference in this case will be. 210 minus 181 divided by 210 multiplied by 100 we are using 210 in here instead of 181 because this is a data book value so we are given this value of breaking stress for copper wear this is a data book value whereas this is uh, measured or determined through uh, experiment by the student uh, in cases like this if we have a data book value we'll use that for the denominator if we don't have that so both of our, our experimental values will find the average between them for the denominator find this uh, we'll find the percentage difference to be 14 percent so the percentage difference uh, if the percentage difference is less than the percentage uncertainty uh, we'll tell that uh, they might be the same thing if the percentage difference is uh, greater than the percentage uncertainty, we'll tell that uh, both of the compared stuff are not the same thing. So in this case, the percentage difference is greater than the percentage uncertainty, which is 6%. So the suggestion is not correct. In method 2, the range method, uh, we'll find the upper and lower limit of this value using uh, the percentage uncertainty. So basically if we have a 6% uncertainty, it means that uh, our value for the breaking stress for here 
I'll just write that each which is 181 plus or minus 6% so 6 by 100 times 181 megapascals so the minimum value would be 181 minus 6 by 100 into 181 which is 10.86 so the minimum value would be 181 minus 6 by 100 so this is 170 point so 170 pascal megapascals and each max is 181 plus 10.86 this is 192 megapascal for cases like this we don't even need to find the lower limit since the breaking the breaking stress we found uh, is lower than the breaking stress of copper ware we'll have to find if the upper limit of this value the upper limit of 181 megapascal plus minus six percent is uh, it contains 210 or not we don't have to even think about the lower limit if you want you can show both of them and show that it's not in the limit here we'll write uh, as the breaking stress of copper is or 210 megapascal is greater than 192 megapascal which is the uh, highest limit for the here breaking stress the suggestion is not correct. So you can use either of those these two approaches depending on the question and your comfort. Now on to question 4. We are given this question about the inverse square law for light. We are told that the student measured uh, used a meter rule to measure the distance d between the filament of the bulb and the sensor of the light meter. We are told that the reading on the light meter is the intensity of the light. We have to explain how two sources of error can be reduced in this investigation. One of the sources of uh, error when we are uh, working or we have an experiment with light would be background light. So we, uh, one of them, please make background light will affect the re intensity reading. the intensity reading of light or intensity reading and uh, we have to mention how they can be reduced as well so in this case we'll uh, tell that we should conduct the ex investigation in a dark room or use something to block the light Uh, another point uh, would be parallax error when measuring the distance d or uh, there's another error here we are told that uh, they're measuring the distance from the sender of the filament bulb to the light sensor however there's no way to accurately measure where the center of the filament bulb is because it's inside a uh, glass shell we can write either one of them
to reduce this we can uh, measure this distance independently at first so we'll measure this distance at first and then we'll add the radius of the filament bulb we can do it uh, experimentally or we might be given the value by the manufacturer if we don't have it from the manufacturer we'll just measure the diameter of this and have that to get the radius So we can measure So we should measure the diameter of the bulb separately and calculate the radius Now on to part B, we have uh, this equation over here, I equals to K by D square. We have to explain why a graph of I against 1 by D square should be a straight line through the origin. So we can write the equation like this, so I by K times 1 by D square. Uh, we can compare this to Y equals to MX plus C, where the plus C is 0. So we can write this is comparable to the equation of a straight line y equals to mx plus c. where c equals to 0 and m equals to k. That's it for this. We can also write um, the gradient is k which is a constant if k wasn't a constant the graph wouldn't be a straight line because k is the gradient if the gradient was uh, not a constant the graph would be like this or like this something curved now we have a graph over here we have the distance d we have i we're given another column since uh, we are already told here to complete it with the values of 1 by d square so the unit would be mid mid m to the power minus 2 we'll calculate each if we get our calculator out a simple calculator trick would be to write the equation down like this so we'll go alpha we'll place the value of x then square it now we'll press calc, uh, we'll put out values of uh, d over here. So the first one is 0 0.125, we'll get 64. Now for the new value of 0 0.175, we'll get this value. So this is in 3SF, so I'll write these values in 3SF as well, so 32. 7 now 4.250 we'll get 16 4.375 we'll get 7.11 4.375 we'll get 
for point five we'll get four point zero zero and four point seven five we'll get oops 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 I'll just calculate it. This value will come out to be one point seven eight. Now we have to plot a graph of y against uh, y on the x-axis against one by d square on the x-axis over here. Okay. So in the x-axis we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight boxes, and the values we have to fit are from one point seven eight. So I'll just start from zero and go up to six forty. Big. Sorry, my bad. This was sixty-four point zero. So we have eight boxes, uh, and we have to fit sixty-four over here. So sixty-four by eight is eight. So if we take each value to be uh, each box to be eight, uh, we'll get up to there. However, working with values like eight uh, is a headache. So we'll uh, take the value which is larger than that and easier to use. So ten. Instead of eight, we cannot use five because we'll run out of paper. So we'll get four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. So we're running out of paper here. If we use eight, we'll exactly use all of the. Papers so will have eight, sixteen, thirty-four, thirty-two, forty, forty-eight, fifty-four, and sorry, fifty-six and sixty-four. But working with uh, the times table of eight is um, much harder. So we usually take one, five, ten, hundred, point one. Point zero five divisions like this because they are much easier to work with. So use ten. Okay, so one five ten hundred point one point zero five 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 point one point zero Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have twelve boxes on on the y-axis, and on the y-axis our values go from eighteen to nine ninety-six. So I'll start from zero and go up to one thousand. So one thousand divided by twelve, I'll get eighty-three point three. So a number bigger than this, which is uh, good for graph axis, would be hundred. So we'll start from zero. We'll go up by hundred. We need up to one thousand. We are using most of our y-axis as well, so there is no problem with using this scale. Now we have uh, to plot the values down. So the first value is nine ninety-six and sixty-four. So. Sixty-four is over here on this line, and continue this line. This is nine fifty. Uh, each each ten box is uh, one hundred. So each box is ten. So this is nine hundred ten, nine hundred twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety. So for nine ninety six, it would be somewhere over here. So this is nine ninety. This is nine ninety five. 
so somewhere over here now for the second point we have 510 and 32.7 510 is on this line and 32.7 so this is 31 32 33 so somewhere in between So if we go on here, then we have 276 and 16, this is 250, this is 260, 270, this is 280, this is 270, so somewhere in between we will get 276. And uh, on the x-axis we have 16, so we'll have a value over here. This is 5, 6, 7. Then we have a value at 109 and 7.11, so 7.11, this is 5, 6, 7. 7.11 and 109 so this is 100 this is 110 this is 100 this is 110 uh, this is 5 6 7 so this is 7 this is 110 So somewhere over here, so this is 7.1. Now for the next value we have 48,4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the line for 50 which is the closest value to 48. And we'll have 4 on this. was the value 48 comma 4 so somewhere uh, under 50 so less than 50 and on the line for 4 somewhere here now for the last value we have 18 comma 1.78 this is 10 this is 20 so 18 is somewhere along the line and on the x-axis we have a value of 1.78 so this is 1 this is 2 1.78 is somewhere in between so that point so we have found a graph now we'll draw the line of best fit for this. To draw the line of best fit for this, we'll get something like this. Uh, now for part 4, we have to determine the value of k from the graph. k is basically the gradient of the graph, which we'll calculate. We'll take uh, a large tri triangle, something like this. So at 70, like this is the large triangle I'm using. So one of the values I'm using is 0 comma 0. So 0 comma 0 and at 70 uh, at 70 this is the value 
this is about hundred this is one thousand one hundred. Uh, we have to label the y-axis as well this was intensity uh, in watt per meter square this is around uh, about what this is 70 comma 1095 yeah. mm, this is closer yeah 1095 So if you find calculate the gradient, we'll get uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. For this case, uh, y1 x x1 y1 is 0 comma 0. Uh, x2 y2 is 70 comma 1095. So the gradient is 1095 by 70. So 15.6. So we'll just put it down there. So 1095 minus 0, 70 minus 0. This is 15 point six. The unit would be so the unit on of the y-axis was watt per meter cube and the unit for the x-axis was per meter cube so this would cancel out the unit of k would be in watts so 15.6 watts now in part uh, 5 we are told that the student switched off the filament bulb and recorded the intensity of the background light as 4 watt per meter square the student then switched off the filament bulb and moved the light meter and she moved the light meter to change the distance until the reading on the light meter was 8 meter watt per meter square uh, we know that uh, the intensity is k by d square so if we make d square the subject we'll have d square equals to k by intensity so in this case d square would be equal to the value of k we got which was 15.6 divided by the intensity of the light bulb the inten the total intensity was 8 watt per meter square but we know that four of those were from the background light so this would be 8 minus 4 the total reading minus the reading for the background light so d would be equal to root over 15.6 by 4 and we'll get a value of d which would be 1.97 meters so that's it for this paper